Hi everyone, it's Endless here. Uh, I'm going to make a card today. I haven't had a trial run of this one, so let's see how it works out. I'm using this Hero Art set. I think it's called Love Jar, Jar of Love. Um, and I'm just going to be using the little mason jar, kilner jar shape. And it would help if I put it on my Fiskus stamp press the right way. I love this press because it's got a grid line on it so you can make sure that your stamp is actually on straight. I'm going to stamp it twice, once onto white cardstock with the Tuxedo Black Memento ink. And then again on vellum and I'm going to go away and cut these out. So I'm just going to colour in the uh, the top of the jar. I'm using Coral, Pro Marker and Oatmeal. And I'm not spending a lot of time on this. I think uh, life's too short, frankly, to spend a lot of time on, uh, on colouring this sort of thing. So I'm just adding a little bit of shade, blending the lines back out with the lighter colour, Oatmeal, and just adding more shadow with the coral. And then for the very top of the jar I'm using lime zest and lime. And I do the same. Go in with the lighter colour and add just a little bit of depth with the darker. And you'll see why I'm using these colours in a minute. So next I took some hearts that I punched out using these two little heart punches and they're in patent paper and I run them through my Xyron machine with the, the, um, the pattern facing downwards so the it's the pattern side that's actually sticky. <coughs> this is a favourite way for me to add glitter to, to things because it means that you've got a really sticky even coat of um, glue on the die cuts or the punches and uh, it's easy to add glitter. Now I would probably have been far better if I'd used tweezers instead of my fingers for this but I'm just going to dump some Martha Stewart ultra ultrafine glitter on top and uh, dump it off again. So there we have some very evenly coloured little sparkly hearts. I'm just going to work out whereabouts on the on the jar I want them to go. Again, I would probably have been better using a tweezers, but I'm not terribly good at tweezers actually. I don't know if it's something to do with the fact that I'm left handed. But uh, I seem to be clumsy when I use them, even more clumsy than than you can see me being now. I'm using a tiny drop of glossy accent to uh, to stick the little hearts to the jar, making sure that I keep well within the outline of the jar. I quite like the thought of sending a little jar of hearts to somebody. Quite a nice idea. The sparkle doesn't show up terribly well on the video, but they are really nice and sparkly. I should probably wave them about in the light for you to see. I have to take my word for it. Now, I was careful to cut outside the black outline on the vellum piece when I cut it out because I'm using a very fine line of glossy accents which would stick anything down just along the edge and I'm hoping that that uh, won't, show, it won't show it dries clear anyway so I think it's going to work okay and before I stick that down I'm just going to take my little box of sequins 
and add a few clear sequins. I'm not sticking them down, I'm just throwing them on. And I've got some quite pretty pink ones, so I'll put a couple of those in as well. And then the vellum can be stuck on top and left to dry. The glossy accents doesn't take that long to dry. And because it's just stuck around the outside, the sequins do, do move. So next I've cut a piece of, it's by crepe, crate paper, uh, a piece of patterned paper with this lovely stitched ed, edge uh, die from Simon Says Stamp. But I thought that it looked, even though it's a very pretty colour and I like it, uh, I thought it looked a bit boring. So I'm taking this stamp, which is from Paper Tray Ink, and it's from Modern Borders set. Putting it on the Fiskars stamp press again, and I'm using a couple of my new Simon Says Stamp Christmas present ink pads. This is Coral Reef. Inking it up, and I'm just going to put some lines of stamping across the very bottom of the uh, of the die cast cut piece. And this is where I wander off to find a baby wipe. I eventually found my very last one. I've been out this afternoon and bought some more. And now I'm using green apple. Wiping that off and then I'll put another line of colour with the, the coral reef. It took me a bit long longer to, to place this one and even then I didn't get it exactly right but I was rushing because I was aware of the time of the video and so on but uh, it looked okay in the end, see what you think. I just need to fill in that tiny corner and the beauty of clear stamps of course is that you can see exactly where you need to to line it up to where, for a continuous line. And next I've die cut a thanks sentiment from Memory Box and I'm just placing this, I think I'm going to put it on the cross here, and the jar there, so I'm, I don't need to mark, normally I would put a little pencil mark or something where the jar is going to go because the thanks is going to overlap it, but I can see looking at it that I just need to butt it up to the, yeah, the stitched lines, and if I, if I glue it that way then it's going to work out okay. I'm using, I forgot to put my tape runner on the table while I was making this video, so I'm just using some Ranger matte multimedium to where to stick the jar down. And it will go sit quite nicely in that top left hand corner. I'm just going to pop an ink pad on top of it so that it uh, so that it has some weight on it while it dries, and another little blob of the uh, multimedia. And I'm using my fingers to apply that. It dries matte, so it doesn't show even if you do spread a little bit about. I'm using that on the back of the thanks die cut, which. fits as I intended it to. And I'll pop another ink pad on that to 
well to keep it in place while it dries. And I've got a, a basic A2 size note card and I'm just going to put some foam tape strips. I get this from the pound shop here in the UK. And I put plenty on. If you don't put plenty on a quite a big sheet like this then you can get the appearance of a dip in the middle. I don't bother to cut it, I just tear it off. It's not it's not a terribly fat tape. It hasn't got a lot of width. It just raises the panel just that little bit off the yeah, off the base card. which gives it a bit of dimension. <clears throat> so there we go, that's my finished card for today. I hope you've enjoyed watching it and uh, maybe have a go at something like this yourself. Uh, it's a very unconventional sort of shaker, but I think it's worked okay. Thank you for watching. See you again soon. Bye-bye.